Demolition is a part of every remodel process and most people enjoy doing it if they have the opportunity. Pretty much grab a crowbar and other destructive tools and, and have at it. Just try to keep from, from hurting yourself. Many people are also plenty capable of putting a situation like this back together, like setting tile on the walls. And there are plenty of instructional videos on how to do that that can be found on YouTube. However, when it comes to dealing with the shower floor and how to put that back together, uh, there may be some questions that people have because there's not necessarily a lot of information out there about that. So I'll cover the process I use in a couple of videos. I'm not going to tell you it's the easiest thing in the world to do because it's not. It really takes us some skill sets and some techniques that most people don't get exposed to very often. But if you're handy and are willing to take the time to put the effort and energy into doing this, I'm going to give you all the information you need to know to end up with a, a good final product. The best thing is that the materials that go into building a shower floor are not particularly expensive. So if you foul up, you're not going to be out a lot of money uh, if you have to redo something. However, once you're at this stage of the installation, you want to make sure you've done everything correctly because you do not want to have to tear out the floor after the wall tile has been installed. Once all the demo work is done, the process starts with a new shower drain and a shower pan liner. Both these items are available typically at the big stores as well as online. I always build my steps out of brick, though wood is more convenient. I have just seen too many instances where water gets to the wood and it absolutely destroys the step, so brick is always the choice for me. After the brick step and shower drain are installed, here's the process from there. A mixture of sand and Portland cement is going to be placed in the shower floor and tapered from the outside wall down to the flange of the shower drain. In this case, I literally used the bottom plate of the wall framing as my guide. The purpose of this layer is to provide a tapered base for the shower pan to rest on, so that in the event that water ever reaches the shower pan, it would make its way to the drain. The shower pan is installed next and is tied into the flange with bolts that hold the drain assembly in place. The flange has a series of holes next to where the drain spins into it, that allows water to make its way into the drain pipe should it ever get there. Next comes another layer of the cement mix which is called dry pack and I'll explain that later. This layer goes directly on top of the shower pan and again tapers down to the drain this time and flushes out with the top of the drain once the tile is installed. So that's a quick explanation of the process. The rest of this video We'll deal with mixing and placing the dry pack and getting ready to install the shower pan. This is what the dry pack mixture looks like. It's a combination of sand and Portland cement with just enough water mixed into it to cause the cement to set up. When you compress it and then later trowel the surface of it, you can get a very smooth finish that dries very hard and is able to have tile set on it. The recipe I use for my dry pack mix is one part cement to four part sand. In this case my shovel is my measuring cup. You don't have to get this exactly right but you want to be close to that uh, one to four ratio. And the 50 pound bag of sand gives me about six shovelfuls of sand. In my mixing pan I have three parts cement and 12 parts sand. That's going to give me about enough mixture to do half of the floor which is a four foot by four foot square. So I'm going to need to mix one more batch to have enough to do the whole floor. The easiest way to mix a dry pack is to chop through it with a hoe similar to what I have here. All I'm doing is pulling the pile from one end of the box to the other and with each chop pulling the material back up on top of the pile. Chopping through about three times is enough to mix the ingredients pretty well. To begin adding water to the mixture, I just create a series of valleys in the pile and then just add a little water as I go, chopping back through it again. 
chopping through the pile about three times and adding a little bit of water as you go starts to give you the consistency that you're looking for. Once the pile is this consistent gray color, you're ready to go. A rule of thumb is that if you take a handful of the mix and squeeze it and can seawater, then it's too wet. The problem with that is that it makes it a little bit more difficult to sculpt when you're trying to work it on the shower floor. If that happens, just add a little sand and chop back through the pile again. So now the fun begins. I'm compacting the dry pack into the floor and up against the wall using the bottom plate of the exterior framing as my guide and the flange on the shower drain as my inside guide. My goal is to compact all this material into place and leave it about a quarter of an inch higher than I need for it to be. This helps to assure that water is always going to be heading towards the drain. The flange on the shower drain is set just a little bit above the finish level of the slab. On my flange for my shower pan, right here, I'm going to uh, use that as my starting point. Basically take a, a stick with a, kind of a sharp edge on it and just begin to cut the mud down equally and taper it out all the way to the edge of the mud out at this point and just get a, a smooth line all the way out to the, to the edge of the mud here. Even though I'm mixing a couple of batches of mud here rather than doing it all at once, this is a process that you want to complete in one step. You're going to get your greatest strength out of the dry pack if it's allowed to, to dry and cure all at one time. The higher speed videos don't really reflect how much pressure I'm using to pack the uh, mud into place. Areas that are not tamped down well will be softer when they dry. So this is really quite a workout. Using the screed stick and the trowel you can really feel the bumps that may be left in the floor as you're working so you can make the floor as perfect as you want it to be. All right, this is the first layer of the dry pack and it's complete now. The shower pan will uh, go on top of this and tie into the drain here. Then uh, this flange goes on top of the of the pan and has bolts that tighten the flange down and then you're able to adjust the height of your uh, drain and and also adjust how much uh, uh, how much fall you have going to the drain uh, when you're installing your tile so so that's it that's the way I mix and install a dry pack Next video will go through the final steps of installing the shower pan as well as the top coat of dry pack before the installation of the finished tile.